thank you all for coming to my talk. Thank you uh, to the Bitcoin conference for, for having me. As I reflect on Bitcoin's progress over the past 15 years, my mind soon drifts to thinking about what we have left to do. Time is limited, material resources are limited, and there's a real chance that in the not too distant future, Bitcoin is going to ossify. And so before that happens, what are the most important problems that we have left to solve that would require consensus changes? My gut instinct tells me that it's privacy. It's a, the problem that comes to mind uh, for me most often. Uh, it's something that you know when I first when I'm first orange pilling somebody, I, I, I get a little bit uncomfortable uh, when I start talking about how you know how all the different steps that are required for a, somebody who's using Bitcoin to uh, maintain and, and, and protect their privacy. But even if we were to fix privacy, whatever that means, there are so many other problems that come to mind, like scalability, user experience, security, uh, programmability. And it brings to mind that really no one of these problems is really the most important problem to solve. Actually, the most important problem to solve is giving developers a way to solve almost any user problem in the domain of electronic cash without needing to change Bitcoin's consensus rules. So that even after Bitcoin technically ossifies, developers can continue to innovate and solve user problems. Like privacy, we, w we want developers to maybe come up with ways to hide details about the user's transactions or to increase transaction throughput without harming mining or full node decentralization. Uh, improve the user experience with new types of wallets that can simplify wallet creation, spending and receiving. And self-custody uh, self security, things like creating vaults spending limits, time delays, and other granular security practices. Or even add programmability to Bitcoin, like extending scripts capabilities or creating smart contracts in new languages other than script. One way that has been proposed to do this is this idea of creating a bridge to other blockchains. And then on those other blockchains, you could kind of implement any kind of feature you wanted, like micropayments or beta releases of new uh, Bitcoin features. You might have seen this uh, diagram that was created by uh, the company Blockstream back when they first uh, came out with the concept of sidechains. And they proposed this, this mechanism uh, called a two-way peg. Uh, which would enable you to transfer Bitcoin between the main Bitcoin blockchain and these other blockchains that they call sidechains. Uh, the, the, the problem with this model, however, is that in practice, this two-way peg is a, a trusted third party. And so users are giving up some security uh, to use these, these protocols. Since uh, we first came up with this concept of sidechains, uh, we've come up with a few different variants of these BTC bridges or two-way pegs. Uh, we have these centralized varieties like WBTC or eMints. We have federated bridges such as uh, Rootstock, Liquid, and Fediment, and even collateralized bridges such as TBTC, IBTC, or NBTC. Uh, however, all of these introduce some kind of trusted third party, and as we know, trusted third parties are security vulnerabilities. These aren't users holding their own private keys and transacting with their own Bitcoin. They have to give up control of their Bitcoin to third parties in order to start using these uh, new systems, which provide users with these new capabilities. 
Another solution to the problem that has been proposed is having a generalized smart contract programming language directly on the base layer blockchain so that you could kind of build any kind of new feature, maybe even any kind of new layer two protocol that you want to. And this is the approach that was pioneered by Ethereum, which was the first uh, Turing complete uh, blockchain virtual machine. So there are a couple of problems, however, with adding this kind of like full expressivity to a uh, layer one blockchain. It increases uh, base layer complexity. For example, adding like centralizing minor extractable value. And it also increases base layer resource requirements, uh, such as increasing CPU and state growth uh, requirements. And of course, what if a better execution environment is invented? Well, then you're back to the drawing board. You either have to you know, hard fork your chain to adopt that, that new execution environment or else be stuck with this kind of uh, obsolete technology. So I want to restate, perhaps, what the most important problem to solve is. It is giving developers a way to solve almost any user problem in the domain of electronic cash without introducing trusted third parties, without introducing complex and heavy programs on the base layer, and without needing to change Bitcoin's consensus rules. Completely, I state this to be the Bitcoin meta problem. So in early 2022, um, the Human Rights Foundation announced a fellowship program to investigate this new kind of technology that was emerging called ZK Rollups. I applied and received the fellowship and published a report called Validity Rollups on Bitcoin, which I published at bitcoinrollups.org. And what I found is that validity rollups actually come very close, if not actually serving as the ideal solution to the meta problem. So for example, validity rollups can support up to 250,000 transactions per block compared to the three or 4,000 transactions per block that we can get today on Bitcoin. They enable more programmability, supporting new applications, as well as new layer two protocols. And they, they can provide significant privacy improvements, such as hiding transaction addresses, assets, and amounts. All with no new trust assumptions and just one soft fork. So compared to some of the alternative solutions to the Bitcoin meta problem, this is kind of what the what the comparison table would look like. Uh, so one solution is app-specific opcodes. So this is like, if we think of a new problem to solve or a new kind of application we wanna create on Bitcoin, we could create just a new opcode that supports that application or solves that particular problem. Uh, this does not introduce trusted third parties, which is great. Um, it, might not introduce complex and heavy programs on the base layer. It depends on the problem that's actually being solved. But it requires changing Bitcoin every time there's a new problem that we want to solve. There's also the L1 full expressivity that I described earlier. Uh, this also does not introduce trusted third parties. And it doesn't necessarily require changing Bitcoin uh, every time there's a new problem that needs to be solved. However, it does introduce the real possibility that there would be these complex and heavy programs on the base layer that could cause centralization and other kinds of issues that uh, we don't want to deal with on Bitcoin. And then we get to BTC bridges as they work today. Um, these have the benefit of not introducing complex and heavy programs on the base layer. Those happen somewhere else, some other blockchain. Uh, they also don't require changing Bitcoin's consensus rules. Anybody can just spin up a multi-sig and you know you have one of these bridges. Um, however, it does introduce this trust in these third parties who are required to operate the bridge. 
Um, so L2 validity rollups don't have any of these problems. They do not introduce trusted third parties. They do not introduce complex and heavy programs on the base layer. And you don't have to change Bitcoin for every new application that you come up with. So the conclusion that I came to in my research is that validity rollups are the most promising known solution to the Bitcoin meta problem. That is that we can use validity rollups to introduce new applications, solve new problems without having to continually change Bitcoin. And it's worth noting that um, these properties apply not only to validity rollups, but validity proofs in general. Validity rollups are just one application of validity proofs. And I expect to see much more experimentation with using validity proofs to solve the Bitcoin meta problem. You'll probably also hear about this in the context of like verifying zero knowledge proofs on Bitcoin, um, which there's been a lot of uh, news about recently. So I also have a slide uh, to talk about BitVM because uh, BitVM uh, is, a, is a popular topic and people, you know, when, they, when I talk to them about this problem, they say, well, what about BitVM? It, it enables you to compute anything on Bitcoin. And so let's compare, you know, BitVM to L2 validity rollups. Um, BitVM does not introduce complex and heavy programs on the base layer. Again, you can kind of push that stuff off onto some other chain or some other layer. Uh, it does not require uh, changing Bitcoin consensus rules. It works on Bitcoin today. Uh, however, it does introduce uh, trusted third parties for certain applications, especially if you're bridging your Bitcoin to another blockchain uh, and trying to do this in like a very capital efficient and trustless way or uh, yeah, trust minimized way. Um, so it's not, uh, it comes close, but is not the kind of perfect uh, solution to the Bitcoin meta problem in the way, same way that L2 validity rollups are. And so what we really need is the ability to directly verify validity rollups or uh, validity proofs on Bitcoin. Um, so I published some research at bitcoinrollups.org if you want to learn more about how validity rollups work, what they can bring for Bitcoin, what are kind of the costs, benefits, and trade-offs. Um, associated with that, uh, they're, you know, they're not perfect. Uh, they're not a silver bullet for scaling or anything else. But I do think that they, uh, because you can, you can use them to build new kinds of applications on Bitcoin without having to actually make any ch changes to the Bitcoin base layer. I think they can provide a, a a great tool in the toolbox for developers to build other kinds of layer two or layer three Bitcoin protocols which could you know, continue advancing the state of the art uh, for Bitcoin scalability so we can scale Bitcoin to billions of users self-custodially. Uh, thank you for your time and I'm happy to take any questions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from John Light. Thank you very much. Uh, if you do have any questions, please uh, try and catch them just afterwards. We have a panel very exciting panel coming up for you very shortly. Thank you very much, John. All right, thank you.